Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Today I will be discussing with you uh, these six different types of stress strain graphs, which are given in the book Applied Dental Materials by John McCabe, and it's their ninth edition. These graphs are given in the chapter Properties of Dental Materials. These are the graphs which uh, show characteristics of different materials, and how would you know that which type of graph is about what kind of material? To know that thing, there is a very little tip or trick that I'm going to tell you and when you learn that when you learn those tips and tricks you'll be easily able to uh, know the type of material whether if it's rigid or if it's tough it's flexible it's brittle it's resilient it's weak you can know the characteristics of that material just by looking at the graph so let me switch to another diagram and tell you those three main tips that you should know before you uh, look at these six diagrams and tell what the, uh, what graph shows which type of material Bismillahirrahmanirrahim so before I explain to you guys um, those six graphs that are given in restorative dental materials by John McCabe let me first explain you the three main tips or tricks that will help you in understanding the six graphs which are given in the in that book first tip or first thing is uh, when you look at a stress strain graph check out the steepness of the stress strain graph within the proportional limit in this graph on the top left you can see that the stress strain curve the stress strain graph is steeper that is it is more towards the stress side as compared to this graph in which the stress strain line is less steep so if this if uh, the stress strain uh, line is steeper this shows that the material is rigid and if it's and if it's uh, less steep and lies in between stress and strain this means that the material is flexible so steepness of stress strain graph will determine whether the material is rigid or if it's flexible the second tip or the second point is uh, length of stress strain graph in elastic region that is the length of this line till the proportional limit or within the elastic region if the stress strain curve or the stress strain line stress strain the line of this stress strain graph uh, it's longer in distance compared to another graph in which the line is shorter this means that the material is strong so the longer the length of stress strain line in the elastic region the stronger the material is and the shorter the line this means that the material is weak the third point is uh, uh, regarding this is not number two this is this is number three the third point is regarding the length of stress strain uh, line in plastic region which in this diagram is shown in red color so this curve is showing the plastic region of stress strain graph this curve is beyond proportional limit that is when the material has undergone some amount of plastic deformation or deformation so the more the length of this curve this means that the material is tough and the shorter the length of this curve shows that the material is brittle so you have to keep in mind these three points number one steepness of stress strain graph which will show the material is rigid or flexible number two the length of stress strain line within the elastic region which will show whether the material is strong or weak and then third thing the length of stress strain curve in plastic region the longer the curve the tougher the material the shorter the curve the brittle the material now why is this material rigid and this flexible this is because you can see this line is more towards stress as compared to strain which means that a large amount of stress is required to produce a little bit of strain which means definitely that the material is rigid and in this case the material is flexible a normal amount of strain stress produces a normal amount of strain in this category where you have to see the material is whether strong or weak you can see that the material can withstand a lot of stress before fracturing which means that the material is strong and in this case 
you can see the material can withstand only a little bit of uh, uh, you can only it in this case the material can withstand only a little bit of stress before fracturing so this is a weak material or you can say that if for example the graph continues you can say that uh, the little bit of uh, the material can only withstand a little bit of stress before undergoing plastic deformation. So it's a weak material. And in the third case, uh, this graph shows that material has a lot of capacity to undergo plastic deformation or deformation before fracturing. Compared to this material in which there is a shorter curve, which means the material can only withstand a little bit of plastic deformation and then the material fractures which means that the material is brittle. Now since uh, you are now clear about the, those three tips, first one is the steepness of uh, the graph, second one was the length in elastic limit and third was the length in plastic limit. Now I'm going to explain these six graphs. Graph A, you can see that compared to graph B, you can see that this line is steeper compared to B which means that this material is rigid because this line is more towards stress as compared to strain which means more stress is required just to produce a little bit of strain so the material is rigid. Second thing this material is strong and not weak. Why? Because I told you that uh, the length of this elastic region, the length of uh, stress strain graph in elastic region is more. It's not a shorter graph, it's a longer graph. So this is a strong material. Thirdly, this is a tough material because there is, uh, there is a larger amount of deformation. That is, the graph has a longer distance in plastic region before it fractures. So it's a tough material. And definitely it's a ductile material because it can undergo a lot of uh, plastic deformation before, uh, before fracturing. So this is a this graph is of a material which is rigid, strong and tough. Now move, moving on to the graph B, you can see number one, it's a flexible material. Why? Because this line is lying between stress and strain uh, coordinates. It's neither more towards stress, neither much towards strain. It's in between. So it's a flexible material. It's not a steeper graph. So it's a flexible material. And secondly, you can see that it's a tough material because there is not a shorter length of plastic deformation. It's, it's quite a long uh, plastic deformation. Thus, the material is tough. Thirdly, let's move on to uh, the third graph, graph number C. Number one, yes, it's a rigid, because, rigid material because of the steeper stress strain graph. So it's a rigid material. Number two, it's a strong material. Why? Because of the length of this, it's longer compared to this graph, D graph, in which it's shorter. So it's a strong material, not a weak material, but it's a brittle material because you can see that this the plastic deformation area or this curve of plastic deformation is very short. Hence, it's a brittle material. It's not a tough material. In graph D, you can see, yes, it's rigid because the curve is steeper, but it's weak because the length is shorter and it's also brittle because the length of plastic deformation is shorter. Same is the case with E. You can see that it's a flexible material because it's less steep. It's a weak material because the length of elastic region is not longer enough. And it's a brittle material because the area of plastic deformation, deformation is uh, shorter. The curve is shorter. And lastly, the F graph, the sixth graph, it's a flexible material because the curve is not uh, steep but it's a resilient material you can see that there's only a straight line and the material fractures there is no curve there is no plastic deformation and we know that by definition resilience means energy absorbed by the material up till the proportional limit and this graph is still proportional limit thus it's a resilient material i hope these three tips or these three tricks would have helped you uh, in a better understanding of these six graphs and you'll be able to reproduce them in a better way inshallah thank you so much jazakallah khair